Well, it has been a crazy 24 hours in the world of Tesla. The long awaited Project Highland Model 3 refresh was finally revealed. And then the Model S and X dropped like 30 grand, FSC dropped. Holy crap, but that's just a video for another day. Let's just get back to Highland. As much as we knew it was going to debut in China, there's some shocking news to tell you about if you're looking to buy a new Model 3. So let's get right into the refresh. I just have one word, gorgeous. Oh, and futuristic and maybe sleek and refined. Uh, this new Model 3 is all of those things. I won't go into too much detail with the changes as there's tons of in-depth videos from people who've already had access to the car itself. But here's what's changed. So we have a new front bumper design, which looks a bit more flat and angular. The headlight, instead of sloping back towards the driver, uh, now it slopes across horizontally across the bumper and there's a more pronounced lip as well. At the rear, we have a new taillight design. It's sleeker and tapers off at the end. Also the addition of a rear diffuser similar to the Model Y. The biggest changes comes in the interior with one big surprise I wasn't expecting. First, we have premium materials with the door panels and dash elements that also bring in ambient lighting, which is so nice. It feels like it wraps around the entire cabin. The center screen is the same size, but like iPhone, they trim the bezels to make the screen itself bigger, and apparently it's brighter and more responsive. We have sublime sound with the addition of three new speakers and subwoofers. We have no more stocks. We now have the same design as the Model S and X for the steering wheel. We have ventilated seats, 360 acoustic glass, making the cabin much quieter. And the biggest surprise is the rear entertainment screen, again, similar to the S and the X. I love this redesign. It brings a lot of elements over from the high-end model S and X with a stockless wheel and rear screen. It also adds a bit more angular and futuristic designs with the new dash, as well as the air vent and steering column, which is similar to the Cybertruck I find. I can see the entire Tesla lineup being a little more cohesive with this redesign, which is so nice. Before you had the X and the X, they all kind of looked the same. Then you had the three and the Y, which looked the same, and then Cybertruck. So Tesla is now bringing everything back together and I love it. Under the hood, everything kind of stays the same, except Tesla says because of the more efficient design and lighter materials, it makes it about 8% more efficient, which translates into 12% more range and comes in a tad quicker as well. Now, everyone is losing their minds about 675 kilometers of range. That is WLTP, which is the European EPA kind of thing, same equivalent, but they are much more ambitious in their range estimates. So if you translate that to EPA, we're looking around 550 kilometers for the long range, which is nice, but not crazy. Before this unveil, there's been talk about if Highland is going to be equipped with hardware 4. And unfortunately, we still don't know for sure. But one thing that is clear is the addition of a bumper cam similar to the Cybertruck. My thought is Tesla are adding these bumper cams to help with object detection that was previously done by the ultrasonic sensors. The current set of provision only is having a hard time accurately predicting the uh, distance of objects. And in fact, Smart Summon and Auto Park are currently disabled on vision only cars. So if a bumper camera is the future, then what's going to happen to all these vision cars that don't have one? A retrofit? Maybe, but I doubt it. So here's the info that's a bit surprising, and you may not have heard this anywhere else, but this pertains to Canada and the US. First off, like I said, we knew it would start in China with cars being made in Shanghai, but the surprising thing is this new Model 3 is available everywhere. So Europe, Asia, uh, Middle East, Australia, but not North America. If you go to the North America order page, we're still seeing the old car. And we are not guaranteed to have it for the rest of 2023. It doesn't say 2024, just for sure not 2023. So there's no date. It's surprising because Canada gets our cars from Shanghai, so you think we would get it too, but that's not the case. Unless this is going to change, I suspect Fremont is probably gone behind in their transition and we may get it when that happens. I'm not sure. As for pricing, everyone thought it was going to go down in price. Well, it went up. Pricing in China went up 12%. And I checked other markets such as France, Germany, uh, United Emirates, and Netherlands. And the new Highland version went up about one to $2,000 and whatever their currency is. So definitely a uh, price jump. Now, the very important thing in Canada, because if it goes up a measly $10, the long range variant no longer qualifies for the federal rebate, which is a huge savings of five grand. Crazier stuff has happened with Tesla, but they might keep it the same just for that purpose, but I don't think it will because it's long range wasn't available before. So they don't really mind if it's not available for the rebate. All right. So that wraps up Project Highland. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on this refresh. And if you're in North America, 
there are tons of deals to be had on the older version. We're talking like over $5,000 worth of savings. And if in Canada, if we, loo- if we lose the federal rebate, it's going to cost you an extra $10,000 to get into a Highland model long range. If you want to pick one up, be sure to use my referral code to save even more money. You'll find it down below in the description. All right. So, and also be sure to subscribe so you don't miss videos, which I put up about every week or so. Uh, thanks again for watching and drive safe, drive electric, and we'll see you next week.